Moving on, the global balance of power is shifting into the sub-atomic realm. Beijing is no longer just chasing conventional supremacy. It is weaponizing the fundamental laws of physics. The era of quantum warfare has arrived and the rules of engagement are being rewritten in silence. Take a look. China is preparing for wars that have not yet been fought. Not with tanks alone, but with physics that bends the rules of reality. Quantum technology is moving from laboratories to battlefields, and the implications could change warfare forever. This is not science fiction, this is military planning. China's armed forces have confirmed they are developing a new class of weapons based on quantum technology systems designed not just to destroy, but to see, sense and outthink adversaries before a shot is fired. According to official Chinese military publications, more than 10 experimental quantum cyber warfare tools are already under development, with several being tested in frontline missions. So what exactly is quantum technology? Quantum science deals with how matter and energy behave at the smallest possible scale, atoms and subatomic particles. At this level, particles can exist in multiple states at once, communicate instantly across distances and behave in ways that defy classical physics. When harnessed, these properties allow computing, sensing and communication at speeds and precision far beyond today's technology. Quantum tech could help radar that ignores traditional stealth coatings, effectively stripping the invisibility from most modern fighter jets. Again, quantum tech could also allow satellites to see through clouds, smoke and camouflage with absolute clarity. If these systems go live, the traditional advantages of the West vanish instantly. However, there are limits. Quantum technology is in its nascent stage. It's expensive and difficult to deploy at scale. Many systems remain unstable outside controlled conditions. Even China admits much of this work is still in testing phases, but the direction is unmistakable. As global powers race to control the next military revolution, quantum technology is emerging as the new high ground, invisible, complex and potentially decisive. Bureau Report, we on World is One. Well, shifting our focus now, ties between Canada and United States are frayed. Trump's tariffs have now compelled a shift on the geopolitical chessboard. Even as the U.S. president is seeking to corner Beijing, Canada has signaled a new world order by forging a new strategic partnership with China. Holding talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing, Canadian Prime Minister Mark Carney stressed that their new partnership will yield historic gains by leveraging each other's strengths. This is, remember, the first visit by a Canadian PM to China in eight years. Now, this new partnership will focus on five key areas. It includes clean energy, agriculture, multilateralism, public safety and cultural ties. Carney also stressed that the progress made with China is a stepping stone to a new world order. I believe the progress that we have made in the partnership sets us up well for the new world order. Remember, Carney announced that Canada and China have reached a landmark trade agreement to remove trade barriers and reduce tariffs. For instance, Canada agreed to cut its 100% tariff on Chinese electric cars and will now allow 49,000 electric vehicles to be imported at a preferential tariff rate of 6.1%. And in return, China will lower tariff on the Canadian canola seed. China used to be the largest market for Canadian canola seed. We want to not just return to those levels, but to surpass them. And so I'm pleased today to announce that Canada and China have reached a preliminary but landmark trade agreement to remove trade barriers and reduce, reduce tariffs. 
By March the 1st, Canada expects that China will lower tariffs on Canadian canola seed to a combined rate of approximately 15%. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping observed that relations between the two nations contributes to global peace, stability and development. The sound and stable development of China-Canada relations serves the common interests of our two countries and contributes to global peace, stability and development. I'm willing to work together with you to promote China-Canada relations onto a path of healthy, stable and sustainable development with a sense of responsibility toward history, the people and the world to better benefit the people of both countries. The latest agreements with China are expected to unlock nearly $3 billion in export orders for Canadian businesses. At present, remember, China remains the second largest trading partner to Canada, with trade amounting up to $118.9 billion. Canadian visitors can now enter China without a visa as well. Canada's overture to China, remember, comes at a juncture when Donald Trump has publicly suggested that it should become the 51st state of United States. He's also imposed a 35% tariff on Canada last year. With Canada being the only G7 country to not have reached a trade deal with America yet, America's next move will be awaited. We've all been there. The cab is late. One of us wants to reach the airport three hours early. The other is still hunting for a charger. And even before the holiday has begun, the arguments have begun. Airports tend to bring out the strange power, turning couples into temporary enemies, whether it is about last-minute duty-free shopping, long queues, or simply who's walking too fast. But now, a surprisingly simple idea is going viral. And couples claim that it is saving their trips. The social media trend has a misleading name. It's called airport divorce. And no, this is not what you think. There is no breakup or ending of relationship that is happening. But this is a temporary guilt-free split designed to keep the peace before the takeoff. The concept is basic. Once check-in is done and the security is behind you, couples stop forcing togetherness. Instead of dragging each other to various shops or arguing about where to sit, they simply separate by choice. One partner could be browsing perfumes and skincare, while the other is busy with buying coffee, snacks, or just sitting at a quiet corner near the gate. Not unpleasantness, no rushing, just some short-term personal space. And before you know it, the couples meet again before boarding, more relaxed and most importantly, far less irritated. The term airport divorce was popularized by travel writer Hu Oliver, who called it a relationship saving move. And judging by social media's reaction, many would agree. Gen Z and millennials are embracing it. Instagram is packed with stories under the hashtag airport divorce mostly from couples claiming that their holidays start happier because of this. Even celebrities are on board. Television hosts Kelly Ripa and Mark Consulis admit that they travel differently. He likes being early, she cuts it close, and their fix? Well, spend the pre-flight journey apart from each other and then reunite at boarding. So at the end of the day, this trend isn't about distance, it is about understanding. Airports magnify stress, and sometimes love works better with a little breathing room. So the next time you fly with your partner, you could opt to separate just for a while.